right, welcome to If the Shoe Fits um, project. This is an acrylic project and it's painted on rock lawn, which is a, a drapery lining fabric. And what I've done here is I have made a layered effect. I have got Velcro attaching my um, layers. And then this little front skirt, I don't know if you can see it or not, the front skirt is all cut into the Witchy Poo's um, actual skirt. And when we flip it over, then um, it creates a skirt for her. So when you're hanging it on your wall, you get that extra dimension. And then I've even got it um, going out from the edge a little bit just to add a little bit more um, dimension once again. I've got a little wire, um, little wire embedded ribbon that I have cool glued under here to give her a little petticoat effect. You could use any scrap of ribbon or lace or whatever you've got. We've taken um, spider webs. We've got these um, spider web accents that we've just painted black and um, we're going to glitter these and then I'm going to um, tuck another one of these up over here under this corner to give my um, sign just a little bit of a spooky feel. <clears throat> we've cut out the bottom of the rock lawn and I've got a really neat new project product I want to um, share with you but um, the, when you cut the bottom of the rock lawn I think that adds just such such detail to it We've got a very good haunted um, wood grain signboard. Um, I think you could use the signboard topper for beach um, scenes, um, any kind of Halloween scene, any kind of boys' room sign. Um, we talked about doing snips and snails and puppy dogs' tails and having dogs and baseball gloves and things like that. Um, really a versatile piece, um, brand new for this project. So um, without any further ado, I'm going to introduce you to our new medium because I think it's just um, absolutely exciting. DecoArt has come out with um, this new product and they are Glamour Dust Glitter Paints. Okay, so we all know about Glamour Dust. It is fantastic dust, um, glittery, dusty type stuff. But this is in colors. And what I've done here, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it, um, you can definitely see it in person. On the skirt, I think you can see some of that flaky stuff is the actual um, Glamour Dust paint. So I painted the stockings and then I put the Glamour Dust over. I did the black um, black ice over this, so that's the black ice um, Glamour Dust paint. And then I did the limelight over the green stockings, so that gives it a green glittery effect and it's just fantastic. But here is, I thought this was pretty amazing. This is just a blob of the black um, glitter ice that I had it in my brush and I just wiped it on my paper towel and when I got done I was like oh my gosh look how shiny that is it's very flexible um, very glittery has an awesome glisten you can layer it over other colors and create a bunch of effects so it is amazing product it comes in so many colors this is what I was kind of excited about and you know once again I'm probably the most stubborn person ever um, when they first sent me this, um, because you know they send me the samples of paints and stuff, when they first sent this to me, I was just like, yeah, no thank you, um, I don't craft, you know. And um, I mean, I do craft, but mm, usually I don't glitter things up. Well, go figure, here I am, a year later, glittering things up. Um, I wanted to show you, they have um, the neons, just like they have the neon paints. These are very, very, very ultra um, glowy paints and they've got them I think it's in four colors there's maybe a neon pink in here somewhere um, I haven't got the whole set in this box right here I've got some over in another location but these when you put this over regular yellow it just adds a luminescence to it it's really exciting um, so they have some jewel colors they have um, some jazzy colors and then they have the neon colors and then there's the whole set if you look at it that way um, but very exciting, and you can use them. I've got the the word here. You can tell the difference between this word and this one. That's the difference that the um, that the um, yeah, what is it called? Glamour dust paints make. Um, anyway, just super awesome, and we'll see how those go on in a little bit. And one of the things that is a little bit different that um, we're going to have to pay attention to with this is we're going to actually have to paint and prep and finish both sides of the rock lawn. Because when this comes over the top, this part is the painted part. Now, I don't have a lot of detail on there, but when you are um, paying attention to how you're cutting and treating and um, preparing the back, you do want to make sure that you have, um, you've got it planned so that you keep the backside clean, at least up here where you fold it over. 
Okay, that is just something that's a little bit different. Normally I wouldn't finish. Um, and Rocklawn, um, one thing that has been addressed a couple of times, um, I've gotten you know phone calls and questions about why banners curl. I can honestly say I haven't ever had a banner curl, um, and not, knock on wood, right? But um, what I tend to do is I tend to treat the back as I treat the front. So if I have anything drawing forward, what I'll do is I'll put a coat of varnish or something on the back side, and that makes them both kind of get a little weight. So if you have any cupping, that's why. The other thing that I do to prevent curling is I roll on all of my finishes. If you take, for whatever reason, um, canvas, and this is, acts like a canvas, canvas kind of collects paint and pulls. If I take my brush and I'm just um, basing on my um, base coat, what's going to happen is I'm going to get pools of heavy paint and they just gather there and these brushes are so soft um, that you know you, if you were going to do something like that you'd want to use something like a stiff bristle brush um, to get your base on. But So using a roller to apply your paint and a roller to apply your varnish is another way to prevent um, any um, curling. The, one other um, hint is the Fini brand of finish is a wipe on and it is actually it does something very strange to this um, material this fabric um, I do not recommend it it makes it ultra shiny and it makes it ultra mm, crinkly wrong it just does something to it I don't know it doesn't look like a chemical reaction but it I've never seen it do that to anything else only to um, the Rocklawn banners that I've seen at conventions and things that people have showed me so um, don't use Fini for this and do make sure that you are um, staying within your brands. I use DecoArt paints and I use DecoArt paints with my DecoArt varnishes. That way um, I know I won't have any of that reaction. So those are some hints that you can um, use on any of your banners. And banners are, and one other hint is to store. This one's going to be a little bit trickier. Um, you want to make sure that you don't crease your, your fabric or you'll get a permanent like um, almost like a crack in it um, because the, the paint will crack. If you've got it on there too thick and then you crease it really strongly you can get a crack. But um, pants or skirt hangers that have the bar across them um, work really good. And then you can also roll them but when you start getting into these little um, weird cuts like this um, I would be very cautious. And then one other thing like here on the skirt where I've got it kind of pushed up if you get any curling then I just curl it back down and then some, for some reason that just helps everybody stay where everybody belongs. You know, it's very flexible and pliable, um, but that gives you the curls going in the right direction. And as long as you don't mess with it and, you know, do that all day long, then you should be fine. Um, I think that's my helpful hints for the day. Um, the Rocklawn is the blackout weight um, drapery lining fabric, so you want to make sure not to get the lighter weight ones because they won't have the same um, heft as this. All right, one of the first things that we want to do is we want to cut our rock lawn. And I've got um, a Lazy Susan um, storage organizer thing here. And I keep big old tall things like this. This is a T-square that is big enough to do things like this. Um, but I've got my T-squares and my rulers, my pop tops for opening things, um, my smash pen that is a glue and a pen, all my stylus things, my um, glass markers. All of these things just live in here. I've got paints and mediums. Um, and things like that. I've got, you know, to hold the red flexi to hold my photos, um, sea sponge. It's got um, just such a met, immense storage capacity. And then it's got a handle so that you can cart it from place to place, and that's what I do. I take it to convention with me and all that. Um, my uh, retractable knife, which we'll use to trim witchy poo. I mean, I could go on forever. Um, but we'll use, oops, I've already got it out. We shall use the T-square and the Ghost Rider. Now this is already a little fluff. This has already been cut, but I'll go over um, and get some gray lead going. This is the Triple Threat Ghost Rider, and the Triple Threat Ghost Rider. What this does? It's got a gray ceramic lead. It's got a roller ball for very comfortable tracing. I wouldn't do without it, and um, a white ceramic lead. If you paint lace ornaments or if you do just if, you, if you're an artist, you need one of these. Okay, so what you would do is you would cut, you would get a straight line first, any straight line. So we'll pretend like we're going to cut this smaller. I would mark my line and make it the straight line. 
I would go ahead and cut that, or you can just measure this way. And then you line up both sides of your T-square, and then you give yourself your other line. Okay, and then you measure, of course. What this is going to do for you is it's going to give you these very straight corners um, and squared it up. If you are cutting by hand or if you've um, purchased um, small sections of rock lawn and stuff, then you're not going to have a square piece. And you do want to make sure that when you're doing banners that you square them up first thing. So always start with a good rectangle with good square corners and um, just cut them with a sharp pair of scissors um, and make sure that um, you do a smooth cut. Okay, so I've got this already done the ruler away. Vertically is, a, is it vertically? Yeah. Yeah, vertically is the only way to store those really big things. It's just so nice to have them um, out of your way and on a, you know, standing in something. Okay, I'm going to use a two inch foam roller and lavender paint. And I'm going to go ahead and just roll on. And this is the same roller that I use. I've got some goobers in there. Um, I prefer to use, for my painting, the rough side of the rock lawn. There's a really smooth, almost satiny side. Not smooth, like, it's not satiny satiny. It's just, yeah, anyway, you know what I mean. It's just way smoother. You can tell the difference. And I'm going to just roll this on with firm pressure. And I'll pick off any of these little goobers. Apparently I haven't used lavender in a long, long time. It's not very often that you crack open a bo bottle of lavender and say, yeah, I'm going to use the heck out of that today, which is what this project has done. So I'm going to go ahead and give it one coat of the lavender on the one side, and then I will wipe off my nonstick black mat. Um, everything just comes right off of this. I will clean this off after I'm dry, and then I will flip it over and do two coats of black on the opposite side using the foam roller. Do not um, take the time, if you can, um, put this in a plastic baggie and pop the head off. Um, it just pulls right off. Store it in the baggie, that way the paint won't dry. And pop on another head for the black paint. We're not going to do anything else with the black paint, but the purple paint we are going to do some slip slapping using the roller. So you want to make sure that you still have a dirty purple roller to do um, the slip slapping after this all gets dry. Now one of the things you want to be really careful of is I've got my purple painted, my first coat on the back side. When I am doing this, I want to make sure that my piece doesn't move around on me. Okay, so I'm going to hold it down in the middle, and I'm going to be very gentle about rolling away towards my, my, um, my edge. And I'll just try to keep that very stationary. Okay, and not moving. And when I get done with it, I'm going to take it off of this so that I don't accidentally slide it through some of my messy paint. Um, on the edges. Okay. Um, don't forget that you're going to be putting, we're going to do a second coat on the back with the li um, lavender and then slip slap into it. So we will have an opportunity to clean up anything. And then the black is really not critical as far as only the witchy poos part is really critical that it stays black. So you have some opportunities for error and messes that you don't have to worry about. But there, these are some steps that you can take to minimize that. All right, now that I've got my um, base coat done, I'm just going to go ahead and squirt. Take it off my paper. All over and let that just soak for just one second. And then all the paint will just come right off. And any of those dried spatters from when I was varnishing and doing my metal powders. So just a wonderful um, work mat. You can use your hot glue gun. You can use your um, two-part epoxy on it. Nothing sticks to this, including tape. I actually have a really hard time keeping it taped to the surface. As long as I don't jostle it too much, it'll, it'll stay. And then I just wipe this up with a paper towel, and I'm ready to go and paint, and I have a perfectly clean surface. Um, a lot of times we used to put a towel down, but if you got a towel lint on your roller and all that kind of stuff, it would make a permanent little mess. So, this is definitely a good substitute for the towel. All right, so it's time to do our slip slapping. I'm going to use my pop top to break off the plastic seal off my new bottle of lavender. It rips a little hole in it, so it makes it easy to peel it off. I spit out some lavender. We need to do one more coat on there, and we use our roller. Now I'm doing 
another project at the same time, and so I've got already a slip slap kind of mess on my roller. What I can do with that, so I can take a paper towel and I can kind of wipe off or squish off, depending on how much I think is in there, the excess, and that will make my colors blend just a little bit better. So I'll go ahead and get my other coat going. And we're going to work wet and wet with this, so don't do the second coat until you um, know that you're ready to go with it. And this takes a little bit of drying in between. You can use a blow dryer if you want. Okay, and it takes quite a bit of paint, even though I'm rolling um, and it keeps it nice and thin, it still takes quite a bit of paint. So I've got it all rolled. I guess you probably don't need to see this whole rolling part. But we're almost there. Okay, now this is where I'm going to go ahead and take my other nonstick mat because I don't want that sliding with the black on my piece. So I'll take the other nonstick mat and I'll just lay it down on top of there. And that way, I don't have it rolling around. I've got a little bit on there. Be a little bit more careful when you put it down. Okay. Then we're going to take our Vivid Violet and put some right there on our palette. We're going to dip the nose of our brush or our roller and roll it off on the side. Okay, whoops. And put your hand right on in there. You can load it a couple of times just to get some good color going. And then we'll just slip slap up the middle while it's wet and that will merge the colors. Now remember that you're, um, you're going to be cutting off a bit of this, so keep, like, estimate, put pattern lines, something like that, so that you have a good amount of the shading that we're going to do on the edge where you need it. We're going to use royal purple and we're going to use another paper towel and blot out some of that vivid violet. And get some of that out of the back. Now with this one what I want to do is I want to load the back of the brush. I want to keep the vivid violet in the front Okay. Roll it to blend. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that around our edge. And we're just kind of slip slap. I'm kind of roller bordering right now, but I'm going to go back and slip slap. Oops, and so see when you get stuff like that, then you just go in with the nose and clean it up. And around your edges, around your corners. And I want to estimate how wide this is going to be. Okay, so I'm going to cut off a good inch and a half on either side. So I need to bring that dark purple to the inside. Bring it in a little bit more. I'm not sure you won't even be able to tell you did it. Okay, we're going to go in with a little bit more of the vivid violet and kind of work those two in and out where I've smoothed it too much. Okay. 
This is a really random thing, and it's just going to add some interest. We're going to do some other stuff. In the directions, it says to go ahead and, um, while it's wet, to glaze with a little bit of the diox. But I think if we put our diox over, I think that'd be harder for you to manage. So we're just going to float it later. When I painted the original, I did do it wet and wet, but here I'm going to go ahead and do it later, just for ease of painting. All right, I'm going to go in with my sanding dish. Sanded. I've got an outline of my pattern. Lots of crunching noise that's going on around here. Okay, and boy, I go right about to end to end right there. Okay. So I'm going to get that all the way on there. Okay. A little bit more room here. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and trace the outline of my pattern, but I will not cut it out yet. All right, and we are going to go, actually, this will make it easier on you. I am going to go ahead and cut out only the skirt part because then when I flip it over to paint this, I want to finish this side first. When I flip it over to paint it, um, my pattern is basically these this outline. So what we'll do is we use a, a healing mat, a self-healing mat, and we'll use our retractable fingertip cutter and that comes off. And what I love about the retractable, um, I actually took the other one off the website only because these are so much safer once you get that little cap on there and you get rid of the fact that that sticks out it is no longer a safety hazard and that is I think very very important by putting your fingertip right on in there and it's got like a little place to hold it and everything like that then what you do is you just follow your line and you don't even need a whole lot of pressure this is one of the sharpest blades I've ever used Okay perfectly clean, cuts like butter, um, just awesome. So you'll go ahead and cut just to there and then just cut it off cleanly right there. We'll cut the rest of this off when we're done painting. Um, it just makes it much easier to, um, to paint and to cut actually. All right, I'm gonna use my triple threat and I'm going to just go ahead and follow these lines up and just give myself a pattern. Okay, and then we're going to go with our dry rub brush and a paper towel. A palette going on here. See, even just this banner is stressing the boundaries of my table here. Probably going to have to graduate to a bigger table. All right, we're going to start with graphite, just because we don't want it to be too screaming memes. And we're going to go to zinc. And just step down. These are actually the colors you use for all the black. And then we're going to take our graphite, dry brush, dry paint, dry paper towel, and we'll dry rub. This is easier to do when it's not cut out, but I think it's easier to manage the pattern when it is. So when you get next to your edge, just flip it off the edge. Okay, so we'll just kind of fill that area with that color. Not base coat, but just so it has a little bit lighter something going on. The um, Ghost Rider, in case I didn't mention it, and I don't think I did, um, erases with you notice that my paint just took those lines off of there. It erases with water spit varnish um, eraser. Now, dirty brush I'm going to go into, just because this is a lot of repetition and I don't really want to be repetitious, we'll go into the zinc color as soon as that's dry. And we'll give that a little highlight right on the tip. 
bring it out about halfway as much. And then when that's dry, you'll dirty brush right into that paint that needs to be shaken, the light French blue, and you'll just give that stuff right there on the tips. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead with Desert Turquoise. Okay, we're going to, with Desert Turquoise, we'll go ahead and float to finish off those edges. And I'm going to go right off my edge, and that just gives it that ghosty, tealy, I'm haunted kind of flavor. I haven't done my previous steps right there. Okay, and that's how we're going to get the skirt like that. And then, of course, we'll add some stuff on top, like um, the glitter and stuff. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is switch to a clean roller head. And we are going to varnish the whole back side of this. And allow it to dry thoroughly. And I'm just going to give it one coat. It's not going to be a, an all-important catch the rain and all that kind of stuff. So I'll just roll that on. I'm going to be careful not to get a whole bunch of stuff smeared on the back side. So, roll it straight back on itself, and then I'll go back over it to get rid of any kind of bubbling or any kind of stuff like that, and then I'm going to roll the rest of it. The nice thing about rolling is you can really get a varnish coat on really quickly and effortlessly. The two inch rollers with the foam head is the perfect roller. If you get a square headed one like you can get in the paint shop, um, they leave ridges all over the place. So we don't want ridges. I think our lines, yeah, we're way out here. So I don't have to come out to this edge. But I do pretty much have to go down to those, the base. going to use DecoArt's multi-purpose sealer. Um, the multi-purpose sealer is a really good multi-purpose sealer. It will do your tin and your wood and just anything that you need to seal. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to seal to protect water from getting into your surface and you're going to make kind of like a little paint sandwich. You get your sealer down and it's made to bond with the wood. And then your paint is made to bond with the sealer, and then your varnish is made to bond with the paint. Um, so you end up with a whole little sandwich. So we're just going to go ahead and do all of our edges. When we get here on these edges, we'll just do it kind of pat, pat, pat like that with not a lot on there. And then we'll sand, and we're going to base coat bittersweet chocolate. I've got my sealer on there. I'm going to go ahead and put this. I've got it on both sides. I'm going to use these little um, super smooth, I think they're made out of nylon um, stands, little kick stands here, because they won't mar the underside while it's drying. And they make just perfect. You can configure them in any kind of configuration. They stack up for storage. Um, they are perfect little drying devices. Okay, we're going to use this dome um, stipple brush. And the reason that we're using this, let me show you the difference. This is the sash brush. And it looks like, you know, if you look at them kind of just on the, the heads of them, they look like they'd be similar brushes. But this, very flexible. Okay, very, very kind of floppy and flexible. And it's the one that I love to use to do the spider webs, which I'll show you. This one is very, very stiff. And what we want, now I would love it if we could get the crescent brushes big enough to do an area and that is this size. But since it doesn't come any bigger than that, we're going to go ahead and use these dome brushes. We're going to use a dry dome brush, dry paint, and we're going to do dry rub. Dry brushing is where you leave scratches, and dry, dry rubbing, dry brushing is where you leave scratches, dry rubbing is where you make it smooth. And what we want to do is highlight <clears throat> straight up the middle of Witchy Pooh's leg. And we're just going to rub gently at first so you don't leave real sudden marks. The nice thing about doing it this way, instead of having all of your black stripes on, is it saves you a lot of time um, and effort trying to go in between um, the different stripes and things like that. Oh, and So that would be what dry brushing looks like. Um, and so I'll just dry off a little bit more on my paper towel. Go for something a little bit smoother than that. 
I was on a special piece or a piece of fruit or something where streaks like that would, you know, make me lose it. I would um, go and take those out. But this is fine. Old Witchy Poo's leg is going to get dry brushed later anyway. <clears throat> we'll cut right, right across her cross where her legs go. And just repeat on the other leg. Okay, and then I could go maybe one more up. This is one of those things where you could wait until you put your stripes on, and then you can make a more educated decision. But I'm, since I've painted it once, I'm going to go ahead and go up one more. See how easy. Now what you do want is you want to have a whole bunch of these brushes, because if this gets wet, it takes forever to dry. And you don't want to make a wash on this leg. Okay, we're going to go ahead and shade the witch's legs with plantation pine. Make sure you have a big enough brush because it's a pretty big area. I'm using a number one. It's good to have at least one number one of everything in your brush collection. Always make sure you have a big enough brush. Okay, they carry a lot of water, which means you can go far with it. I'm going to tuck that right on in there. up next to my line, and then we'll straighten it back down. Well, we're going to shade where it goes into the shoe. And where it goes around the shoe. And then I'm going to re-black my shoe where I've made a mess. But it's always good to go through those um, areas so that it doesn't look like you were avoiding them. And this is where a blow dryer is going to come in handy. And you'll notice when I did this, I avoided cutting through. I didn't want to float here when this was still wet and this was still wet. And that is uh, because then it will wipe off part of your float and it will make them look real funny looking. And always kind of round things out once you start floating and blot anything that looks terrible. Do you think my hands could get any more paintier? I think they are paintified. Okay, so we'll come up the leg here, right up next to that float. And let's see, I'm going to need a little more water. One more paint. Um, the canvas surface is a little bit more um, dry to paint on. It likes There's so many more pores that you have to make sure you have quite a bit more water than you would normally have. All right, and we'll just repeat down this leg and down this leg. And I think that that's besides tucking some more dark green down there. Then we'll put on our stripes and base them. Okay, we're going to use the crescent brush and we're going to use zinc and we're going to dry rub across these little stripes. And then we're going to repeat with light French blue. Might need to repeat a little bit with the um, the zinc. Make sure we have a good support for that light French blue. Sometimes you can repeat the, the dry rub and it um, just gives it that extra little zing. Now dirty brush into light French blue and give that a highlight. And then maybe one more time with just not so much paint rubbed off and highlight in the center. I'm going to keep the highlights real even going up the leg and then we're going to go back and give that same shape following highlight um, accent on the green stripes. We'll go ahead and we'll take the, the I think it's is it olive green, olive green and go across the shin just to give it that same kind of line and to brighten it up and we'll want to keep those highlights even like we talked about.
you'll take your large flat brush and or your angle shader either one is fine and you're gonna go ahead and shade with black Woo! Um, not on the green right there if you get it running too much it just give it an extra little blot And just to connect the two, let's just go ahead and run a narrow float right next to the edge of the witch's leg. Just to connect the two floats and the tights and make them appear all at one, all as one. All right, we're going to use camel and a crescent brush. And we're going to dry rub the handle. This one could be a little bit bigger, but I think um, having kind of some little gnarls right there is actually an okay thing. Because this is Witchy Poo's broomstick. What a great way to get a highlight right down the middle of the piece. I'm going to go ahead and highlight these little um, ties here on the broom while I've got this color out. Well, I've got a similar color in my brush. I'll just wipe this out and pick up Honey Brown. And then we're going to do some skinny. This is what we love about this brush is it can go wide like we did here, or it can go skinny like we're going to do here. I'll just give us a little highlight on our buckles. When you get real skinny like this, you don't have to spend as much time rubbing um, the paint off because the, it's more of a dry brush look. You want to see the scratches and the paint. And then we'll go repeat with the Marigold Dirty Brush. And then that's going to be just slightly less of a coating. So you reduce the coverage of the application. Okay, we're going to shade the broomstick with some bittersweet chocolate. Loving the bittersweet chocolate color. I haven't used it in a, a really long time as a brown. I've used it, you know, maybe as a shadow color or something, but this is it's so rich. I didn't realize. Okay, so we're gonna just go down both sides of the broomstick. And we could repeat that if we don't feel like we get it strong enough. Um, we could do some shading on the buckles, but I didn't on the um, original. If you wanted shading, you can put some shading. Flip it over. I'm going to turn my brush on an angle so I don't wipe off this other float. Let's see how that one came out just very much stronger. And then I'm just going to tickle in, because I'm impatient. And we'll pick up a round of brush and some water, and a little bittersweet. And we can make some of these gnarly thought it. Handle lines and wood grains. Love it. Okay, we can pick up some honey brown. That was actually supposed to be honey brown there. I think it doesn't matter. The I would highlight honey brown with the um, I would highlight honey brown with the cocoa color, so um, it's in the same family. And then we'll give it a little bit brighter highlight down the middle with just like a dry brush. We'll let that dry, and we'll shade. Bittersweet. And so we can shade while that's drying, we can shade around it. It's kind of come down here in a little groovy. And you can draw your shading kind of at an angle. You don't always have to be flat to the surface.
Now you can mix a little bit of lamp black in with your shading if it didn't get dark enough. Okay, and so you just kind of increase the strength of it. increase up here on the broom if we wanted to. It's looking a little pale on this one side. Each time you paint something you're going to do some things just a little bit differently. Maybe that you're not pushing the colors as hard one day as the other. Um, or you might be in a darker mood. You might like things a little bit stronger colored. Or maybe the first time you paint it maybe you're timid. You know, So you paint it again and you're going to be a little bit bolder. Okay now it's time to attack this broom. All right, we're going to bring in some honey brown, and we want to get a little bit of water to thin the honey brown. And we want to use, I'm using this number four Easy Stroke brush. It is a very full, lovely um, round brush. And then I'm going to just start bringing in, oh, as I roll everything around, I'm going to start bringing in the jaggedy little, um, okay, you know what, I'm skipping a step, hang on. And we'll just add a little bit of, we are supposed to be milk chocolate, not honey brown. I was like, why is that so bright, right? Okay, no problem, just rub it off and continue on. Okay, so now I've got a little water in my milk chocolate, and we want to bring these bristles in, in really jaggedy kind of ways. Try not to think about it too much. Um, Squint your eyes at it. Okay, and now when I'm bringing it down the bottom, if you put a little bit more water in your brush, then you can kind of sneak them in, and you won't know who's doing what, you know? It'll be kind of like they're soft in the background. And so you just let them dance around. And look for places that they can cross. can tell when I'm thinking because I shut up. <laughs> what does that say? Okay, so we're going to keep going until we get them kind of full. And we think we have enough to start off with. And what's interesting to me is there's really not a need for too, too many. If you get it too full, it's going to be too busy. Okay, now we're going to go in and shade with a little bit of lamp black. in between some of these. <clears throat> Pardon me. Just here and there, just to add depth. And they can be other sets of these things. Other bris um, yeah, bristles. Okay, we can bring it up in the top. We're going to shade And shade it underneath and over. Okay, that just gives us one more layer of depth. Now we'll go in to the honey brown. And then we'll just choose some to make be the top bristles. Okay. And you want to kind of don't line it all the way down it. You want to kind of maybe skip hatch them. And then you can create some new ones as well. You want to keep your center of interest out away from, you want to 
have things kind of lead. Center of interest is where the colors and everything are busiest. Ooh, or like that. That was kind of not where I intended to go. Okay. <clears throat> can have some things coming out of the broom that aren't in the pattern. Then we can go into marigold. Dirty brush. And just kind of lead that eye down that broom. dry and scratchy. That wasn't too bad. I know sometimes things like that that are really loose are intimidating. Um, okay, so now I guess we'll go and do our shoes because we are almost, we've got a spider to put on, so I'll go ahead and um, pop my spider in there while I'm at it because then the, um, the shoes and the spider are kind of highlighted the same way. We're going to highlight using a dry rub using a crescent brush. And we'll start with graphite. And graphite is probably going to a little bit disappear here. But we'll put down a first coat just to, to say we did. So I'll get it kind of tucked up close there on all of these little um, crinkly places. Now, what we want to do is we want to do the high points. Okay, so wherever there's a high point and there would be a reflection, that's where we're going to go. And so up here where this is flipped up. Um, here I pretended like this was actually flipped over. And so that is a little like tongue sticking down there. on the toe, of course, where the toe bends, for whom the toe bends, okay, repeat, and then fade it down. And so what's neat about this is we're not really going to be shading because the black is self-shading. We'll do the heel, we'll do this softer because it's a bigger area and blend it out really nicely. Pretend like we're going to give that a nice high shine to make it feel like almost like a patent leather kind of bowed out shoe. We can highlight just one side of this foot down here, the shoe heel thing. Okay, same thing over here. I think this is just such a fun project because um, it's got interesting painting moments, but um, it's none of it's really, really hard, so it would be an awesome class project. Um, it's a little bit unique in that we use some multimedia. Multimedia meaning, um, I've had some questions about that. Multimedia means we're using different mediums. Paint, Acrylic paint is a medium, and then when we start bringing in the rock lawn um, as a surface, but we put it with the wood, and then we put it with the, the ribbon and the lace, and stuff like that, that starts making it be a multimedia project. If I um, did an image transfer in it or something like that, that would make it a multimedia. Now we'll go dirty brush into, and the medium, so what's neat about the multimedia um, is it can be anything. We're going to go dirty brush into zinc, and we'll continue our highlighting. So see how we leave this dark to, to self-shade. I want to do this heel. I'm going to be a little bit more gentle. Turn the 
and my brush on the side to get it to chisel and then fade it down, coming down over the, the top of the arch. And now we'll do our highlights with the light French blue, dirty brush. Now as we dirty brush, the dirt on our brush will make this color darker. The next time I do it, it'll be lighter. So make sure that you plan for that and maybe start in your darkest areas, like down here. And now, you know, when I add more paint, um, probably in here, would be a darker, okay, um, over here. I mean, next to the buckle where things might not get so bright. I'm going to look for any other down here where it's going to be shaded. And now I can go and scrub a little bit stronger. So now my second load is going to be a stronger color. So we'll do that where things are going to be strongest. And also, when you're wearing the color off of your brush, so for instance, the first time I put it down, it's going to be bright. So I'll do my chisel, and then I'll feather it out. So I might chisel over here, ooh, really strong, and then, you know, dry it off with my finger. And now I can come over here to my heel where I want that to kind of bulge out, and I'm going to be able to get a soft look, and then I can do my highlight in the middle. So it's just a matter of how hard you push on your brush and when you're loading, you know, at what point you load that brush. Maybe we want just a little bit of a shine down there. And so generally speaking, when I'm doing this, I am pushing kind of hard, pushing a little bit hard, and then I'll feather, feather, feather. Um, as I now, if I wanted to increase maybe the roundness of this, I could drag some of this color out. I don't want it to get too chalky, and since I didn't drag that out, but that might give my shoes just a slight rounder look, lumpier. Okay, these would make fantastic elf shoes. I don't know what we could put over here, but these would make great elf shoes. Have a little bit of highlight coming down over here. Okay, now we'll do the strong highlights. These could be shiny shoes or not, and we're going to add some uh, desert turquoise. So, um, but I think we could do a couple of strong highlights. Shape following, interest. And that'll give just that indication of the fact that there's some shine. Okay, and I think that that is good. And so much fun to do. Oh, you know, I plopped my stinking brush in the, the water and didn't do my spider. Okay, now this is what one of the problems is. Um, with these brushes is you use them and abuse them and then you don't because it's dry rubbing and you just let the paint dry um, then you have a problem so I'll show you how to clean that okay we have um, Winsor Newton brush cleaner and restorer and it is magical stuff because it will take out any hardened paint and oils or acrylics or whatever um, and it's safe. You just don't want to use it with plastic. Um, you got to be careful with like meat trays. It likes to eat that kind of foamy plastic. So this, my brush is completely dry. My paint is completely dry. And I'll show you another one I've been saving for a video. Um, this I did um, butterflies. These are so hard. I mean, it poked little holes in this thing. I let the paint dry and it's soft back here. I just have it, I mean, I've got it so I can't even break it apart. Yikes. Okay. Anyway, so I'll show you the little guy first. Watch 
as we just go ahead and just press it in the cleaner, it instantly starts taking the paint out. And then you can tease, this is a little bit small to do this, but I can tease onto these little spikes. And that will tease it out. And look at pretty soon I'll have enough to base coat a room with a lovely sage green. I don't know what I was doing with this brush, but I, I know what color I was doing it with. Okay, so and we'll just do that and then wash it with soap and water and your brush is going to be clean. It's really quite a good idea to go ahead at the end of, for example, this project. Um, you know, I've got different paint colors stuck in the brush. This one very obviously has a lot of strange colors. There's greens. Okay, so see how much came out of that. I have not cleaned this very well. Um, I tend to be a little bit lax because I have this brush cleaner and I know how well it works, so I know how far I can push things, which is all the way to completely dry. So when I get done with a project, it's a really good idea to go ahead and wash your brushes out. I'll just rinse that out in the water. And let's see if we can get this big guy to, to soften up. Okay, he's awfully big too, which is interesting. So first what we do, so he's going to soak that right on up. Ah, there goes my paint. Got to get a little bit more medium. You could use a tin or something and store this medium in it because it doesn't matter if it gets dirty. If you had a little glass jar. Okay, so I'm going to just start rubbing to release. And the problem is I have to kind of get up into it before it'll soften all the way. This would be a, an excellent candidate for a little soaking moment. Okay, so you can see exactly what color that was. That was green. <laughs> How's your dark green, maybe? I won't work this to death on camera. I know it can be a little bit boring if you already are familiar with the product, but if it can soften. There we go. Look at it starting to release. If it can do this, then and it also, if you test it on cloth, it'll take your um, paint off of your fabric that you have gotten it on in your painting room and painting clothes. Okay, so I'm going to try. Nope, we're not we're not softened yet. I'm going to lean this um, sitting over to the side in this um, so that it can soak up into that and then I'll bring it back um, after I do the topper and we'll see how we do. All right, we've got our spider to do. Go into our grays. We're going to keep the highlights more to the top. Let's see, is his head? Okay, his head's the top piece. So we'll just bring that brush around. We can highlight maybe towards her. I've got a little bit too big a brush, but then I just made that other brush all dirty. Mostly you can make these brushes be any kind of size you want them to be. You can make them a little shiny. Brush in the water, and now we'll do a little bit of highlighting on his legs, a little skip highlighting. We'll just go straight over to the gray. Depending on where it is, like it's showing up better where it's um, on the purple. I'll make little dashes for the web. We're going to base the eyes in the light French blue. And just meet them side by side. Okay, your nose is going to be based with cocoa. Because all spiders have cocoa colored noise noses. We're going to put his eyes in with the lamp black. We'll put the color on the spider's eyes in with the desert turquoise. I mean, I really kind of 
just didn't do any whites and stuff in his eyes only because you know we didn't have white on the palette and I didn't want to bring white out just to you know put a dot in the spider's eyes or whatever um, but you could easily do that and we're gonna go and shade his nose and then we'll shade the two little eyeball color things with um, and you want to blot your brush when you're shading tiny you want to blot your brush so let's give them a blue look And now we'll go ahead and accent and highlight with the desert turquoise all over the place. So we're going to go on to the spider's legs and we'll accent. I love the desert turquoise color. Okay, I'm going to flatten out my brush and I'm going to do a little dry brush moment on his highlights. I'm going to give him a head. Okay, then we can go into the feet or the shoes and the broom and we can just go ahead and give it just highlights here and there. And we'll go. It just gives us, just like it's my shadow highlight. Then we'll do our shoesies and give the broom handle a little bit of a highlight. You could go on this, this and give a little bit of color in there. That could be fun. Okay, and then we're going to make everything that is blue have a, kind of almost like a cast outline and then you can also go back in and dry brush some highlights where you want them because when we go and we um, erase our lines or varnish then we're going to find that we erase our lines like uh, we're not going to be able to tell where things were so by giving it just a little of this blue cast to it gives us a chance to say, yeah, this is where the shoe lines are. Okay, we can have a little bit on our buckle if we wanted to. We can have some on the toes of our shoes. She has now got some haunted little shoes. Um, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and cut your um, cut your banner, and we're going to roll on the base um, the varnish. Um, signing it. This is a good time to sign. Actually, let's do one more thing because I want to give the background just a little bit more of a beefy highlight. Um, get out your vivid violet. I think there's one more color, pink. Here's what you do when you lose your highlights in the background. You go in and you put them back in. So I've lost a lot of the highlight that I wanted. That magical quality here and there. And so I'm just going to go in with the dry rub. kind of in little crisscrosses if I want to um, and make it be like it's going to be magical. And that's just going to increase
Now we could also, I told you we were going to do this and I forgot completely about it. Alright, so we're going to shade with dioxazine purple. It is easier to shade with dioxazine than it is to do that wet and wet thing that I did the first time. I try to make sure that I write my directions so that you're doing what I'm doing. But when I'm doing videos, I try to make sure that I'm teaching you how to do it the easiest way. So let's give those corners a little glaze. And then I'll just deepen and make it more like it's a purple thing going on. And I can be right over that edge. I don't have to worry about it. That just warms it up and makes it be more, um, more awesome. Walk it in. I have some purple coming and sneaking in here and there. And the piece, if you wanted to, you could have some coming behind his shoes. Um, I didn't do this on the original piece, but you could. And have it mean that that's where the shadows happen. Sit down here, let it burn. Okay, kind of cool. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and cut. And you want to use a straight edge when you're cutting this, or... Um, and then you'll use your little detail knife down here where there's these really sharp angles so that you can get them cut just nicely. And then roll on your varnish and let it dry and I'll show you how we're going to make the magical zowie happen with the stockings. Alright, I've got this in a little paint saver just to keep its little nose down and I wanted to show you the progress. It's been about, what, 15 minutes I think. And I can now wobble and kind of open that up. Yeah, I must have stuck that directly. Oh, yeah, there we go. Look at that. Can you see the bristles flexing? I'm going to let it just continue to soak. The paint savers appear to be okay, kind of plastic, to use with the um, with this brush cleaner. Certain kinds are fine. Um, certain kinds are certainly not fine. So I'll just lean that over there and come back to that later, and it'll be all clean. Rescued brush. Alright, so I'm going to draw. I haven't got this quite base coated, but I think that's going to be okay. Um, I'm just going to sketch on some rough lines. Okay, I'm going to make this be a very cracked thing. Some cracks here. Just look and see, we want a big knot here and various and sundry cracks. Here's what I can do. I can go ahead and I can make this be an exact replica and worry about the line, but I think it's going to be so much more natural looking if you don't worry about it and you try to just kind of wing it. You can decide what you want to do, but that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I want to shade to separate the, the sign. So where I'm going to have these boards, I'm just going to go ahead and give it a very irregular float blend anything away that seems like it needs to be blended away and that's just going to separate those. See how it already, because I didn't base coat solidly, it already gives it an indication that there's some wood grain going on. And then I made sure to um, base coat in shape following strokes when I was doing this. So that way the wood grain would not be going up and down and it would be going the right direction. So I'll go ahead and shade this little guy right here. And then I'll flip it over and shade flip floated back to back. Okay, and we'll go ahead and shade the bottom. Okay, we're going to switch to a slightly smaller brush if I can find it. Let's, let's do our dry rubbing first. And I think I'll go ahead and blow dry it so I don't dry rub through any of this wet stuff. We'll start out with Honey Brown and we will... Um, it's not Honey Brown, it's milk chocolate. We'll pull in from the edge and then here and there throughout our board. 
different lengths, different heights, different, you know, strengths of color. We don't want it too spotty. We don't want like a bunch of polka dots on there. But we do want our ends to be kind of lighter. We'll leave those stripey lines there to indicate that there's already some boards. And down the road. I've had a lot of fun with the um, wood grain with the people that work with me um, because they were quite enamored with it. They were, oh wow, that looks like wood grain. I think sometimes it makes you feel like you work for Disney when you do stuff like this. Okay, and that just gives us some rustic roughness. Next to uh, here and there. Now watch what's happening here. My brush isn't quite dried off, and I'm leaving um, stop marks. So if you're gonna do that, you gotta be careful about your stop marks and make them irregular. Okay, that's where things are. Okay. You could dry rub with some of the black in here if you wanted to. Okay, so I just want to get, and I'm kind of reading the board, I'm kind of like, okay, and now, so that's a dark area, so let's keep the light highlights out of our dark areas. Just kind of looking at it and you know, squint a little bit, see if there's enough of something and sometimes you can't know if there's enough of something until you know what the heck you're doing. But looking at the picture can help. Okay, so now we've got that kind of all splotchy going on. Uh, we're going to go into the honey. I'll dry that off a little bit more. and then we'll accent what we've already highlighted. And it's time for a different paper towel. All right. Ooh, strong. So we'll put that highlight within the milk chocolate highlights. Change your um, stride, if you will, and go from short long and that will help make the irregularities of the boards um, shine a little bit more. Might do something short here and then walk it. Okay. I might just turn it on its chisel. You can do it very dry and leave some scratches. Shape following, meaning that you're going to go the direction of the board. Let's get you on this camera here. Some things can be brighter. It's starting to look board like, huh? Then we'll go into the lighter color, cocoa, I think. Neutralize that um, honey brown. Now the cocoa we're going to be a little bit more tender with. And maybe even a little bit streakier. If you got things too ghosty, you could do a wash of a brown over the top of it. That would be a really nice way to help yourself out of a ghosty moment. If you, if you take this cocoa and go right on to that, that um, dark brown, you could end up with a really chalky, ghosty look. <clears throat> I 
Okay, so now that's enough kind of background stuff. We're going to take the um, White Wonder, which is my favorite streaky brush, brush, and we're going to mix a little of the cocoa in with water. Get that down here. And then I'm going to just open it up really strongly. You can't really hurt these brushes, and I'm going to blot it and reopen it up. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of follow what the grain of the wood is telling me to do. If it goes high, you go high. If you want a knot, you've got to make a high and a low. All right. And you just want to leave it kind of natural. I've got a grain going here. I don't want curly things, though. Curly is bad. Okay, so that's going to start adding some of that texture. I want to keep it straight. And when in doubt, um, I've got all my knots lined up in the middle. I don't want that. Okay, so I'll go back in. Now, if I wanted to, okay, so I've got, you know, a lot, awful lot of swooping and things like that going on here. If I wanted to, I could easily go back into black. Um, not in the directions. This is one of the reasons that you watch videos is because I give you and talk you through different things you could do. We could go in to some of the black and make it an older board, you know. Ooh, yeah, too old, right? Okay, in the corners, you could go in to the brown that we base coated, the bittersweet. You can just play with it. I think that's my best advice. Okay, now we're going to go into the big round, the easy stroke round, and then we're going to, I think we do need that bittersweet out. Between black and bittersweet, that would be our detail stuff. So we'll water them both down. And we can mix them. If we think one's going to be too dark and one's going to be too light, we can do whatever we want. All right, now this is where we get sketchy. Okay, and that's going to be too dark. So I'll have two puddles. All right, so we're just going to sketch some knots. Okay, and I'm not, notice that I'm not outlining, I'm not trying to make this be a serious little moment here. I just want some of those board lines that, okay, that are irregular, that are nature surprises kind of, you know. Some will be like cracks, where that board's coming apart. We'll crack the ends and draw it in. I gotta have a couple of cracks in some of them. Some you can have really big ones. Remember, they're all gonna be slightly different boards, so you can't do the same thing all the way down the road because that's not interesting. Okay, so I'm going to have another little naughty poo. Okay, now notice when they're drying, they're drying down a little bit softer. Okay, so I have another. I'm going to keep it a little bit darker then. And it's like wherever my hand um, hiccups, that's where I put things. Wherever I go, <laughs> You know, they, oops, there goes one. Okay, I guess that's where we're going to put a crack. And you don't want things too curly. Okay, you don't want to, you know, you don't want a wiggle that goes like that. You want a wiggle that, that just kind of e e e e s A little bit of a shaky curls. I think the signboard has uses all over the place. I think that, you know, I can see a beach scene. We should do a, um, we need to do a, what do you call it, a, a weathered wood kind of thing. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm just getting there. I'm going more towards black and strengthening things now. You want to 
make sure that your cracks have some deep dark in between them. And then the boards could kind of be coming apart if we wanted them to be. If that's a knot, that's going to be like a hole, and if it's a hole, then that means it needs to have some darkness. Most holes are dark. The other way that you can make everything stand out is to go back in and give things a little bit more highlights. So you could, next to where the boards are, you could give them just a little bit more. Now I think I've gone, let's compare. Okay, I think, well, maybe I'm about the same place. I was thinking that I had gone a little bit more drama on the um, second one, but I think I've got a pretty good match. I like it. Oh, you could put some rust in there. That'd be really pretty. All right, I'm going to go ahead and transfer my letters on. Oh, and we need our nails. So I'll base the nails. Um, do I have any of my grays out? No. All right, we're going to do graphite nail heads. I'm going to do two on each board and just kind of line them up. You could definitely um, put... Um, some your white wonder and sketch them out. And let's get these on the middle here. I'm not worried about them. These are um, not nail heads that I've got those <laughs> totally opposite places. These are not nail heads that you buy from the you know from the store. These are ones that you know somebody forged a long time ago. We're going to line underneath with a strong black with our small easy stroke. And it's just a really strong little kind of whoops going on there. Oops, that's really strong. That's okay. I've got a lot of things to go on top of here. Okay, then we're going to shade. In some place I have a flat brush. We're going to shade next to the drop shadow that I just did. And we're going to try to stay out of it with a little bit of the light French blue. Okay, and that's going to make those look like they're raised nail heads. And then you can shade the opposite side with the lamp black. To do our magical sparkles, we're going to go into the desert turquoise. And you can sketch them on there if you wanted to. And you could say, okay, it's going to go here, and it's going to start on my eye, and then it's going to come around. It's going to come back up here, and then it's going to start right here. And then what you do is you just rub the desert turquoise. In a really loose, scumbly way. Make it bigger than you think you'll need, and then you can go back in and strengthen. And you could stipple a little bit if you wanted it to be. And wherever it's going to be strongest, that's where you give it a little bit more whoosh. And you go into Indian turquoise, and you'll do a little bit more with the sparkles. Just brighten them up just a little bit. And with the smaller easy stroke, you'll use the Indian turquoise. And then you'll make your sparkles. Okay, you can do a big dot in the middle of them if you want to. You want to keep it in the center of interest. You want to keep them bigger and brighter in the center of interest. And then really fade them out where they don't really do anything big. Okay? And you just complete that circuit across the piece. And then we're going to take our Vivid Violet and the final step here is to take Vivid Violet 
rub it off real good. And then wherever we didn't go, we want we don't want the isolated pink in the bottom. We want to bring the pink up into the top, but I really couldn't figure out how else to do this. So wherever we didn't use um, the other colors, we can bring in a little of that pink into our brown. And that just kisses it just enough to not isolate the pink down below, carries it up above, and that makes it magical. So I think you can see how much sparkle there is on there. One thing that I did that I want to um, persuade you not to do is I went ahead and I had the colors. I put some of the sparkles in my pink, and that really robbed the green and the black of their, their sparkliness. So I would encourage you not to go crazy with them because it would be better to have them standing out and not have everything sparkle. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to take our green, which is the limelight green, and we're just going to wipe this straight across our stockings. And it has a green tint, and it's the perfect green tint, and you're just going to put that everywhere the green is. And on the, the letter up top, on the shoe letter. And then you'll go into the black, and you'll do the same thing. And that's why we varnished first, because we don't want to mute any of the um, sparkly stuff. Okay, and then we're going to take from the shoe anywhere we want to keep kind of that shine going, that sheen going. Then we'll just give that a little bit of the sparkles. Okay, and you would not believe what a difference it makes. I know on camera it just doesn't pick up. I know it's not the same. When you see it in person, you're going to lose your mind. It's just awesome. To do the skirt, now this is certainly optional. This is just that ribbon that has a little bit of wire in it. And so I just used a cool melt, melt gun. <laughs> How do you say that? Cool melt glue gun. And I put a band right across after I had this all cinched and pleated. And that's just, um, what is that, three inch wide ribbon? And then I found Velcro tabs that have um, sticky on the back. And so when that goes through, that just Velcros down. And then you have, whoops, a three-dimensional little skirt. Okay, the banner is ready to hang. Okay, oh, we've got one more thing we've got to talk about, and that is our spider webs. Okay, we've got spider webs here in the corners. Let me get this away. And I actually had an accident, I threw the, the board on the ground and one of my spider webs shattered into about 150 pieces. But when you throw the board on the ground, you expect such things to happen. Um, we talked about making them so that they went out the top and they go back to back. I can show you with two different sizes. Um, but that you can do them so that they, they actually mirror each other. Anyway, so you, the options are limited, limitless when you have the same ones. This obviously would be cooler if I had two of these. This is the funky web, and then this is the, um, I don't have a curly web here. Well, they're on the website. Anyway, but um, and they come in different sizes and things. I'm going to use this sash brush because it's that open brush. And I'm just going to hold this and tap it in different directions, and that's how I'll get all those little nooks and crannies. I was really concerned about how to base coat nooks and crannies when we started making these. Um, and this just works like a champ. Okay, and then afterwards you can decide if you want to glitter them. You could put on the Glamour Dust glitters, um, or you could do black glitter. When this dries, I'm going to try the black glitter and see. I don't have the original one done with the glitter. You could use these as screens. It's kind of cool. And if you just poke your head here every oh which way you can see if you've gotten it. And then with the glue gun, you will just pop that right on. Whoops, get you on camera. Pop that right on underneath there. And then it makes an awesome scene. 